death is never easy to accept. And it's that much more painful when it robs us of the ones we love most. But sometimes even in death, others can be saved. This story is not a recreation. It's the reality of one family's painful journey of loss and discovery that began on Monday, July 5th, 1993, near Las Vegas, Nevada. 9.49 p.m. A call reporting a car crash with multiple casualties sends EMT Renee Johnson to the scene. These vehicles were very, very badly damaged, and it was front-end damage, and when someone says that there's a young girl in there and she's unresponsive to any stimuli, your heart goes out right away. These are kids. We need them. 10.40 p.m. Flight for Life arrives at University Medical Center in Las Vegas and hands off the critically injured passengers to a trauma team, including nurse Carol Peterson. Yeah, take that one. I'll stay with you. Okay, the other one is doing okay. His last saturation right. was 99. Drop there were two bad traumas. Uh, one of the traumas was major head injuries. She was in the back seat. She's 17 years old. She's been totally unresponsive to anything. It is emergency physician Alok Saxena's first shift at this hospital. It was totally unbelievable. This is a young child with um, literally an open head injury and uh, brain matter exposed. We knew this was an injury that she could come out of. When an oncoming car driven by a man who'd been drinking crossed the center line and struck the family's rental car, both the girl and her father, Bjorn Olset, were crushed by the impact. Fractured ribs, crepitus, creep lung sound. I put a chest tube in him. Um, he's been drowsy, but otherwise alert and oriented. The father had uh, injuries to his chest. He had broken some ribs, and uh, he was critical but stable. It was reassuring that he was awake and alert, and he could talk to us. You were in the front seat or back seat? Front seat. Front seat. Yeah. Your daughter was in the back seat? Yeah. Okay. Behind you. Behind you. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's her name? Katrina. Katrina. Okay. 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 She's not doing very well. I'm sorry oh. to tell you that she's she, she's probably gonna die. She had a pretty significant. It's real difficult to give the news to any father or any parent that something's happened to their child. She still has a blood pressure and a pulse. But she can't talk to us. She can't hear us. She can't feel any pain. Bjorn's wife Hannah their two younger children, who were also riding in the car, and a friend who was driving, suffered only minor cuts and bruises in the accident. My name is Dr. Sexton. Has been telling him that our daughter is not okay. Torina. Torina. Yeah, she she's very serious. She has yes. severe head injury, okay. and, and a part of her brain just totally destroyed. She's not in a situation where she can uh, survive it. She's not. No. <laughs> She's not having any pain. You know, it happened right at the time. She's sound asleep. She can't feel any pain. She doesn't know where she is, who she is. It probably happened right at that time, right at the scene. Do you want to see her? No, I don't think so. It's up to you. If you want to see her, I'll don't do, do anything. Don't do anything. There's nothing to do. There's no sign of brain activity. We'll have to do tests on her to make sure, but clinically it looks like her brain is just destroyed. But if she did live, she'd be a vegetable. He was trying to let me know that the best thing who could happen was that she, she would die. We went out into the lobby, and she told the two children that their sister was gone. Okay. Go ahead, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Ulset family had come to this country from their home in Norway for a three-week vacation. We deal a lot in the trauma center with people dying. But with this child, here's a family, as they had put it, on holiday. And they were having to go back after the holiday with one less child. Okay, so you've got to get one. Okay. Okay, here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had this bad accident. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could. Okay? Okay. Be careful, dear. Okay? Okay. Bye bye. Ah. Twelve thirty AM. Bjorn's younger children get to see him just before he's taken into surgery. You can give him a hug if you want to. Just watch the shoulder. You, you can touch him. You're not going to hurt him. Go ahead. Do you have any allergies? No. Or no allergies in the bed. No medical history of the other one? No. Someone coming up and talking to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time it'll be, whether it'll be here. Uh, are you familiar with the donor network doors about no, donating organs no, and no. things? I'm here in the United States, when uh, they have someone who passes on, yeah. we have uh, an out, it's a group known as doors, and they will come and they talk to people and their families. So, mm -hmm. someone, don't be surprised when someone comes and talks to you. But I, had to, I have to discuss that. That's no problem. That's no problem. Side. But I just didn't want you to be, you know, really shocked when it happens. But that's no problem, huh? Okay? Just, and like I said, if you think of anything that you want us to do, yep. you just let us know. We will. Okay? She 3 a.m. Yeah. It's kind of a tough time yeah. to talk to her. She's taking it quite well, though. I was very amazed. Um, kids are taking it pretty hard, but she, and I'm sure she's taking it a lot harder than she's oh, showing, sure. you know. Do you want to take me there and introduce you, mind doing yeah. that? Once they'll do some confirmatory tests to determine that your daughter is what's called brain dead, mm -hmm. okay? Once they reach that point, then they will pronounce her dead at that point. Mm -hmm. We can come in then and do organ and tissue oh. donation. You have an option of doing internal organs for transplant. They can take the heart, the liver, the lungs, kidneys, small bowel, pancreas, anything like that, and they can use it for transplant. Mm -hmm. If you do decide to do it, what they'll do is she'll stay here in the ICU just the way you see her right now, and we'll have to keep her on the ventilator. It'll take us about 12 to 20 hours mm -hmm. to get the entire thing done and get the organs placed. We go by a national waiting list, and we'll start at the top and call. All the organs will be placed, and we'll have a recipient before we remove them. Do you have any questions? I don't know what to ask about that. Um, I'm sure everything sure. right now is kind of a fog. I mean, a lot's happened yeah. in the last few hours. I'm not normal. I can't be okay. Right. And we understand That's that. Fine. And you take your time, talk to your husband. I was called back to my husband when he was out of surgery at 4 o'clock in the morning. And and then we started crying and we started to talk about Katrine. And uh, we tried to accept that she was going to die. Around 4 p.m. the day after the accident, transplant coordinator Debbie Anderson from the Nevada Donor Network comes to the hospital at Hannah's request. Okay. Have you talked about it with her before in the past, or you just feel like she no, would have... No, talked about it with the uh, father and the other children, and okay. we kind of agreed that we would do it. If, okay. it was, uh, if it was me, I would do it uh -huh. with my body, so we thought that she would choose it. Okay. In accordance with the Uniform Anatomical Gift Act, the undersigned hereby consents to the donation of the following parts or organs from the deceased above named. 
what I need you to do is say yes to each one that okay. you that you want to donate, to okay? Um, the heart. Yes, okay. Liver. Yeah. Pancreas. What's that? The pancreas, uh, one of the things it does is to make insulin. A person oh, yeah. who has oh, diabetes okay. doesn't have... Okay. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Um, eyes? No, I don't feel like... You're uncomfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lungs? Yes. Kidneys? Kidneys, so it's uh, about back here. Uh, it, I think by giving her organs, uh, we, d we don't believe she needs them anymore. So why not uh, let somebody else uh, have them? And uh, if they can get healthy by that, we're just happy about it. Well, thank you very much. I just hope it will be good for anyone. Well, I wish, yeah. wish if we were trying to help anyone, we could have helped your daughter. Thank you. Oh. We agreed, all of us, that we are sure we'll never regret what we did. I'm sure we would regret it if we had said no to that donation. At 8.30 in the morning on the second day after the accident, 16-year-old Katrina Ulset is officially declared brain dead. I was calling you on, on an offer for a heart. This is for our house. H O U S H. Uh huh. That sounds good. Let me call the surgeon and I will. You've gone from an emotional contact with a family. You have maybe some inkling of the personality and the humanness of this person. You almost have to make a switch, and suddenly this person has to be a donor just to make those phone calls and offer out the heart. Uh, cardiac output, 9.7. They have an hour from the time I make the call and give the information to find out how the recipient is doing at that time. They have to be ready to go to OR very quickly. Hi, this is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. This is Kathy Whitmer from Stanford University. And we are going to accept um, this heart for Mr. Housh. All right, great. Yeah. Did they accept? Yes, they did. When are they going to be here? Right. You talked to Debbie before about the heart, right? Um, would you be interested in the lung? Okay. Do you recover pancreas, or will he have to come in to do that? Or Your job is to place every organ that you can. They've given a precious gift, and um, it's my responsibility to make the best use possible. She doesn't know anybody that will probably accept these lungs, but I can wait to make one more phone call. Right now, as it stands, the heart team can get here at 9 at the earliest. We are still waiting for the uh, acceptance from the liver team. Right, 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 great. There are over 33,000 people waiting for organ transplants. Um, probably about a third of the people who are on the waiting list are going to die waiting. We just got the uh, tissue typing back, and there's a six antigen match on the kidney. Hi. How are you doing? I'd shake your hand, but I don't want you to move anything. <laughs> My name's Debbie Anderson. My name is John. Hi, nice to meet you. Are you. You look like you're feeling better today. Yes, I feel much better today. Good. That's good. Well, I'm so sorry about your daughter. I, um, came for one thing. Just to let you know that we've done some of the organ placement. Um, yeah. And the surgery is scheduled for 9 o'clock. Yes. So that's can just a... Can you find anyone that can use some organs then? Yes, yeah? yes. Here we start. Her, the heart and liver oh, and probably kidneys oh. and possibly pancreas. So. Oh. Well, I know it's been difficult for you. It's been a difficult decision, but I just want to let you know that we appreciate it. And Thank you. Yes, we're just glad that you found somebody who can do something. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, most important right now, thank you. Okay. We'll let you know um, in a few weeks how yes. everything turns out. We'll let you know yes. how the people are doing. And yes. Thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll get well fast. Thank you. I'm sure it was. Okay. okay. The three days we had in San Francisco, we just learned to love that city. We were quite a happy family there, and... We said to each other that uh, we will never be in such a beautiful city again.
when we were in San Francisco, we we said to each other, we left our hearts in San Francisco, and she's going to do that. So, yeah. So, she was the only one who did. When we continue. We were told about a month ago that he was running out of time. Across the country, thousands of people wait each day for a new heart or kidney or liver that is their only chance for survival. When the Ulset family made the difficult decision to donate their daughter's organs, they started a chain of events affecting the lives of at least three other families. By 11.25 p.m. on the second day after the accident, the organs have been removed and are ready for transport to San Francisco, Stanford, and Salt Lake City. Clark's been disabled now for nine or ten months. He really hates not being able to have the strength to go out and play with the children. 45-year-old Clark Sullivan has already had one liver transplant, but that liver was infected with hepatitis C and is now failing. We had two or three false alarms. A donor had been located, but complications arose, and, and after three hours of waiting, they tell us it's a no-go. You're so elevated, you're so anticipating this uh, transplant, and then, boom, within a matter of 30 seconds, you're just devastated. That's hard. Just, you're on an emotional roller coaster all the time. At 22, Anna Velasco's kidneys failed because of a rare disease. For more than a year, she's been kept alive on dialysis. Some days was, she was feeling good. The next day, it's totally the opposite. It's really hard for me going to work, taking care of Carlos, taking care of her. I have to give everything I have and keep the hope alive. He was a normal child and a normal teenager growing up healthy and normal. And then all of a sudden, you know, this he's stricken with this. 37-year-old Bob Hausch is dying of heart disease caused by a viral infection. You never picture losing your children. You always think that you're going to go before they are. My husband couldn't work anymore. He couldn't walk. He couldn't breathe. I did everything I could to help him to feel better, but he was just in such bad shape. We were told about a month ago that he was running out of time. We knew that without that heart, he wasn't going to make it. I received a phone call from my daughter-in-law that there was a donor. And the joy was just, it's overwhelming. And I just couldn't imagine that my son's going to get a heart. That family had to sit down together and make a decision. The decision was to give their child's heart to ours. Stanford University surgeon Edward Stinson is part of the heart transplant team. The art and science of transplantation are not perfected, but the chances of Mr. Hausch being alive and well five years from now are in the range of 65 or 70 percent, whereas they were zero before his heart transplant. somewhat thrilling to replace a person's heart and to see that new heart take over the circulation and provide a new lease on life. It's almost like a new start for each patient. 750 miles away at Latter-day Saints Hospital in Salt Lake City, Dr. Legrand Belknap is one of the surgeons who will perform Clark's liver transplant. Mr. Sullivan has been in liver failure really for probably a year now. He and his wife have been very anxious about whether or not he would be lucky enough to receive a transplant before ultimate death. We had estimated that his survival would be less than 12 months. The woman in the room next door to us was also waiting for a liver transplant, and hers didn't come in time. At 4.10 a.m., Dr. Belknap begins the surgery to remove Clark's failing liver while Dr. John Sorensen prepares the new liver. 
The dissection to get the old liver out can be one of the most demanding and horrendous experiences of any surgeon's life. Since it was a retransplant, getting the old liver out is much more difficult. The potential for major disaster is quite high. And we're simply barely now seeing the edge of the originally implanted liver many years ago. Encased in adhesions that the body has provided to uh, conceal it off, actually. 5.15 a.m. Mr. Hausch's relatives? Yes. Oh. Dr. Stinson and the team are very happy with the, the way things have gone. The uh, new heart is functioning very well, and um, everything is just going as we would expect. Bob, you finally need him, okay? They're here. Okay, you can talk to him. one moment to live in some other person and to give that person that didn't have the chance now the chance to live the hard parts don't and you're going to be all right you know. the gift that that family gave us will it'll never be forgotten 6:32 a.m. Okay, we're on bypass okay we're up three meters oh, a person can't live for very long without a liver that's working, therefore we hope and we expect that the liver works immediately. Lab, please, quickly. Every surgeon who implants an organ once releasing the clamps questions whether it's going to fail or not. In Clark's case, we almost immediately saw bile coming out of the graft, which is one of the visible signs that the liver was working. It was a tremendous feeling at the time to think that this is going to give this man a new life. When we continue. When 16-year-old Katrina Ulset was killed in an auto accident, her family agreed to donate her organs to try and help at least four of the families have a new chance at life. Though one of her kidneys was rejected by the body of the man who received it, heart transplant recipient Bob Hausch is doing remarkably well less than 12 hours after his surgery at Stanford University Hospital. And his birthday's Monday and he's gonna get, and this was his gift. There was no better gift than this. It's the best birthday present you can get. I don't recommend it for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the pain is gone. We see a brand new sun. I thought you said you wanted to go to Disneyland. At least on life. <laughs> Disneyland is not paying me no money to say that. <laughs> when I hug my son, I'm hugging, you know, that donor also. And there's just nothing like that joy that those, those organs have, have been transplanted and given life. What a wonderful gift. We think that in, a, in some way, Katrina is living by helping other people who maybe would have died. The way they expressed the hugging my daughter, it, uh, it was very touching. And I, we think we're part of them, yeah. <laughs> she was so good. <laughs> His first comment that he made when he woke up was, when are they going to do the surgery? What are they waiting for? And I says, it's over and done. And he, he couldn't believe it. Clark is doing very well. His liver began working immediately yeah. after implantation. Enjoy this. This is your first treat. He'll be able to return to Lunch. fairly normal activity again. <gasps> Breakfast. He should be able to play tennis if he desires. He should be able to swim or even to scuba dive. How you doing? Well, not too bad, considering. For the shape he's in. This kind of operation leads to a number of moments which are euphoric. And one is this morning when you see the patient awake and able to communicate with you. 
And another will be in a month when he walks up and shakes my hand. Her first question, and this is the honest truth, was, uh, is my daddy going to be dead? Mm -hmm. Her second question was, are you going to bring me a present from Salt Lake? <laughs> I would like that donor family to know that Clark will use his life well. He's a very loving and caring person, a good dad, and that his children will appreciate having him around for whatever more time that he will be allowed. I certainly can sympathize with them and their grief, but I still do very much appreciate their willingness to do what they've chosen to do. Thank you for your gift of life. And we regret deeply that it had to be at the price of your daughter's life. Madam Hare, not six feet under. I vote for that. It's been 12 days since Katrina's second kidney was transplanted into Anna Velasco at UC San Francisco Medical Center. Okay, but in general, your kidney function is improving. I feel happy. I want to tell a thank you for donating me a kidney. And thank you to the girl. How are you doing? It helps a lot. Are you looking forward to getting out of the hospital? Yeah. You sure you don't want to stay with us a little bit longer? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> you can see her color's much better. You know, she's got a, a pink glow to her. Um, and she's full of energy in comparison to when we saw her last year. It's good to see. Anna is very lucky that she got a transplant. There's over 600 patients here at uh, the University of California, San Francisco, waiting for kidneys alone. There's happiness at the other end. Better than when you came when uh, we know that her heart is in one city and her kidneys in another person, I feel like our family is getting even bigger by that. So the more people who can be helped by Katrina, the better. Six months have passed since Anna got her transplant. My son, Carlos, he has cerebral palsy. Now that I got my kidney, it's better because I can help with his therapy, feed him, and play with him. Because I feel better, I can give him a better life. Back then, she couldn't even walk at all. Now I can see it's a total different person. And um, I can see Carlos, too, that uh, on his face, he has a big smile on his face again. Ooh, oh. I can see the happiness is coming back again with us. Six months after the accident, the Ulset family returns to San Francisco from their home in Norway. It is a journey of healing. It's important for us to come back and feel something uh, what we was feeling the first time, to walk around here from place to place, all of us, all five of us. We were a happy family here this summer. We, we liked it very much here, and that is part of the healing, to do it again and to not to be afraid of doing something that hurts. We thought this town was so nice, and we loved it. She wanted to have a picture of herself in front of San Francisco. And uh, the last picture we have is from the beach of Santa Barbara. This was quite a foggy day, and uh, but it was warm and nice. And she just had promised to put her feet, and that was what she did. <laughs> so we could tell the folks home we had been in the Pacific Ocean. And that was the last day. The Yulset family wanted a chance to meet some of the people whose lives they helped change, including Bob Hausch and his wife. I heard that they wanted to meet me. I said, wow, it's going to be pretty tough. Hi. Hi. Hi to you. Sorry for your loss. Hi. We wanted to meet you so bad. <laughs> it seemed like I knew him. It was like we were family. The medications that help prevent rejection of new organs can also cause side effects like puffiness and brittle bones. But Bob Hausch's new heart is doing well. 
she gave him a chance to live. There needs to be more people like you that, you know, donate. Everyone agreed right away. So that was no problem. And we don't regret it when we see you, though. Yeah. And I thank you a lot. Yeah, I know. We'll remember her always. Yeah. Always. Yeah, I brought you a picture. Did you bring a I want to see a picture of her. I was thinking about Katrin, and I saw Katrin, and I think, oh, there he is, the people wearing Katrin's uh, heart, and it was so, I couldn't see. <laughs> I have been preparing, but I wasn't prepared for that. Oh, you guys wave to me. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. No. Clark and Cheryl Sullivan and their five children have come to San Francisco to meet the old sets. We just celebrated Christmas together, and the thing that was most beautiful about it, and we just kept remarking over and over again, is that there's not an empty chair at the table. We have the old sets to thank for that, because we wouldn't have Daddy at Christmas this year had it not been for them. My gosh, look at that. Ah, you do it the easy way. There you go. The thoughts of losing my family uh, were very frightening to me. But now I have the opportunity to continue on and to be a father to my children. I owe them my life. Okay. Glad to meet you. It could have been me needing organ. Maybe it could have been uh, Katrina. Then it was so easy to say yes. She's a person to us now. Oh, yes. You know. Not, just, we I hope so. Oh. This is the thing that I really feel bad that <laughs> transplant recipients do not ever know who their donors are, and I think yeah. that's sad. Yeah. It's a sad thing. It just becomes. All of this makes more sense to me now. It gives my life more purpose. This young girl's given her life for me, and I think I owe her something by living the best life that I can. You just don't know who you are. It was important to um, see their faces. When you heard the names before, they were just names, and, and now we know them a little, and we can see that they are strong, and they are alive, and that's a comfort to us. There she is. And there she is. Pretty girl. They've made us a scrapbook, which was such a touching thing for them to do. Because we have her now, we have, we we have the heart, and now we have a face to go with that heart. She's very beautiful. She's still alive because she's living in me, and I hope that they feel like I'm part of her family. It's amazing that one person can help so many people. We do thank you from the depths of our being. And for that decision that you had to make, the most difficult decision you've ever made, turned out to be the happiest day of our life, which was the saddest one of yours. And for that, we are truly grateful. And, and we, just, we, we just want to hug you for it. Thank you so much. It was from all of the recipient. And it comes from the heart deepest in the heart. You feel it sometimes. We didn't do this just for you. We did it for oh, ourselves God. to have some comfort and to have find some hope in every anything. Right. It was the only sure. thing we could trust to have hope in. That's the part of our decision to We don't know how long we have each other, none of us there. But uh, maybe we should give a little bit ourselves when we are alive and uh, to care about people and each other. I'm very proud of her, you know. I am. For more information about the Nationwide Donor Program, call 1-800-24-DONOR.